The meeting will come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to tonight's planning board meeting. Please be aware of the fire exit, which is located to the left of the room. In the event of an emergency, please move in a calm and orderly fashion down the stairs. Do not use the elevator. The meetings are recorded by the secretary for the purpose of the record and minutes, so please identify yourself each time you come to the podium and speak into the microphone. The board will follow the items in the order that they appear on the agenda. Extra copies are located next to the door. After the case has been called, the applicant and or representatives shall come to the podium, identify him or herself, give his or her address, and then present their case. The planning board members will then have the opportunity to question the applicant. If the case is a public hearing, it will be open for public input, at which time anyone wishing to speak to the board regarding this application will come to the podium, identify themselves along with their address, and direct any and all questions to the board. Uh, also, just a reminder uh, that we do need to wear masks, but when you're at the podium, if you'd like to pull it down to speak, that's acceptable. Uh, once all public input has been completed, the applicant or site representative will be given the opportunity to respond to any input. Once all public input has been completed and all questions have been satisfied, the case will be closed to public input and the board will then move on to a decision. No further input is allowed at that point. Uh, one other housekeeping item. We had some uh, rather unexpected illnesses and absentees this, this evening, so we're running on a four-person board tonight, uh, which means that any case that uh, is, is up for a vote will require all four uh, present members as a yes vote, a uh, yay vote. Uh, any nay vote would, uh, would mean a negative or a declined uh, approval. So it's a little, little bit of an odd situation tonight. So with that, unless there's any other housekeeping items, can we please call the first case? First case on the agenda this evening is case number PB 2021-10-2. Upon the matter of request, request by Yost Neon Display, Inc. for acting as agent for U-Haul for signage approval to install a replacement wall-mounted sign on premises 1106 Eastridge Road in the C Business District. Good evening. My name is Michael Yost from Yost Neon Displays. 20 Rancier Drive, West Seneca, New York. I am representing U-Haul in the removal and installation of a new sign at 1106 Ridge Road. The current sign is a non-lit sign that's been there for years. They are proposing a new LED illuminated sign, the same exact height, the same exact width of what is there now. Um, I have reviewed the hours with management to be turned on one hour before and not later than two hours after. And they have agreed to that on this email right here. Perfect. Um, they see no issue with that. Um, if there's any questions by the board, I'm happy to answer any question. Uh, I just have one question. Um, just for clarification's sake, um, so the, uh, the, the U-Haul and the self-storage portion will all be lit? Is that no, correct? No, just U-Haul. Just U-Haul. Okay. Yes. okay. And the U-Haul letters that you see there, they appear black on your paperwork. That The front of those letters are going to be a white acrylic. Then they're going to have a perforated black vinyl, which goes over that. So at the daytime, it appears black when it's off. When they light at night, it's almost a, a light gray color. Um, it kind of subdues the whole thing. And a lot of places do that. Sometimes they want to, they want that black white look at night, but it's not really a pure white at night. It's more of a grayish tone. Okay, Mr. Huber. Not for me. Mary, anything? Okay. Nothing. My only question is to staff. We were going to check with the attorney to see if um, we can look at the lights that are on in the back. 
the lights meaning the exterior light? Because or we're looking at lighting. I asked if we can't ask about all of the lights. I'll, I'll have the deputy town attorney, but I think this is a signage um, related application. And so to the extent that the lighting on the building is part of site plan, not part of the signage application. Um, yeah, that, that's my understanding as well. That yeah. it would be limited to okay. signs. Then my only request to you, and it's just a request, is there's lights on the back of that building. I know of them, yeah. And they're on 24 seven. So they're okay. like bleeding into the neighborhood, which I happen to live in. Yeah. Um, it would be great if they don't have to be on, especially if the place closes at 10 o'clock at night. Well, in my experience with working with you all for many years, they're very reasonable people. If the town were to type up a little letter and saying, hey, is there anything you can do to get these lights on a timer? I don't see why they wouldn't. They're going to put a timer on this. Oh, that would be wonderful. I mean, just type up a letter from the town. Okay. And if you want to forward it to us, I can get it to them. I'd be happy to send a letter on behalf of the town of Rockaway. That is wonderful. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Chair, I'm sorry if I missed it. Did you mention something about the um, conditions for the hours of uh, operation? So, so I, I did not specifically. However, the applicant did uh, state that the client was willing to agree to that. Um, if you would give a copy of that email if we don't already have it to staff, just so we have it for the record. Thank you. Okay, so this, uh, thank you. Nothing yes. further to add, I take it at this point? Nothing from okay. me, unless there's a question. Um, this is a public hearing, correct? Okay, so you can have a seat. We'll open up the public hearing. We will open the public hearing. If anyone wishes to speak with regards to this application, please come to the podium. Going once, going twice. Okay, with that, we will close the public hearing. We're willing to move on to uh, a motion, if anyone was so inclined. Uh, seeker on this uh, is type, type 2, It's a type correct? 2 action for seeker purposes. No further analysis. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I, on PB 2021-10-2, I would um, make a motion that we approve this as as a, as a, as the application is stated with the condition that the um, hours of lights are one hour prior to opening and two hours close uh, shut off two hours after the uh, close of business at 10 o'clock okay do I have a second on that second thank you mr. Huber um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstains. And we have, what, three absence? So with that, motion carries uh, four to zero. Thank you. We should do it. I think she's still a little wet. Oh, that's okay. We'll let it dry out. Okay. Just give me one second here. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm all caught up on paperwork, so I appreciate the little minute there. Okay, so on this next application, we have a uh, previously tabled application, correct? So we need to remove that from the table. So I would make the motion that we remove that from the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And here's three absent. Okay, please, Ms. Secretary. Uh, next item on the agenda, case number PB 2021-09-1. Upon the matter of request by Vital Signs, acting as agent for Ridge Portland Rochester LLC, for signage approval to refurbish the existing pole sign on premises 1233 East Ridge Road in a C business district. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Lester. I'm the applicant. Uh, do you need my home address or the address of the pro project? 
Uh, home or business address for yourself, please. 1657 East Avenue, Rochester, New York. Thank you. And with me, Steve Stanley from Vital Signs and um, 764 Ridge Road, Webster, New York, 14580. Thank you. So we just showed up today as a follow-up to the work session last week. Uh, we we were we would like to ask to uh, adjourn our application so that we have another opportunity to attend a work session to talk about it further. We just want to do that in person. I don't know if that's required. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, Wanted to see no. everybody again. That's, it. that's okay. <laughs> appreciate that. How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> Sorry um, for the uh, pump fake. <laughs> no, that's that's quite all right. Um, with that, do we need? We don't need a motion on that, correct? We don't need. A, you'll need a, um, a motion to table. It. You're going to need a motion to adjourn it to the next month. What I would say is hold the public hearing now, and then you can continue okay. to hold it open. Okay. And then this way, you wouldn't have to necessarily. Ta I, I, if we hold the public hearing open until next month, you wouldn't have to take a vote next month. You would just be carrying it over to the next month as well. I think that's right. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, if you would have a seat, we'll open up the public okay. hearing since it Thank was you. advertised Thank you. that Good way. See Thank you, guys. Okay, so with that, we will open the public hearing. Anyone that wishes to speak, please come to the podium. Seeing none. I'd recommend keeping it open in the off chance that yep. um, plans could be sure, altered change. or modified. Yep. yep, so we, we will leave that public hearing open until next month. Mr. Chair, on PB2021-09-1, <coughs> I move that we adjourn this case until next month with the public hearing being left open. At the request of the applicant, right? At the request of the applicant. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstain, three absent. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you uh, next month. Next case on the agenda is case number PB 2021-10-1. Upon the matter of request by Crystal City Signs, acting as agent for Ridge Portland Rochester LLC, for signage approval to install new wall and tenant panel signage on premises 1233 East Ridge Road in a C business district. Good evening. Good evening. You need it, um my name and my address. Yeah, name and address, uh, please. Kurt Edens, 55 Ice Rose Lane, Rochester, New York, 14623. Thank you. If you would, just give us a brief description of... It's uh, three identical channel letter sets for the uh, Verizon store going in there in that plaza. So at, at the workshop, we talked about eliminating the third set, which I, I'm fine with. You know, I advise my customer that, that that's not going to pass, so... Okay. So it would just be the two, the north and the east. And remind us again um, on the illumination of all these signs. Uh, they're LED illumination, uh, white uh, 6700K LEDs in the white letters, and <clears throat> the red, uh, the, the rating they gave me was 625 nanometers, which is just for the check mark. Okay. the board have any questions? Mr. Richards, I'll start on your side this time. Sure. Um, staff was going to look into the fact that this is a uh, multiple um, <coughs> storefront on this and that it meets the sign requirement for that zoning. It uh, it does. A strip plaza, basically. Uh, yes. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. And just to be clear, um, on the application, the signs that you're asking us for, is that one and five? And I'm gonna, the, as soon as I find it, I'll let you know what page I'm talking about. Sure. If it's on the yeah, map, it's it would, on page two. I'm sorry. Yeah, it would be one and two. Five is just the logo on the door in vinyl. Um, okay. So it's one and yeah. two. 
Yeah, one and one and two. All right. Thank you. And um, we've also talked about hours at workshop. Um, that it yep. would be. Yep, I have it written down here. Let's verify it. Mrs. Hollenbeck, anything to add? No. Mr. Huber? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Richards asked staff about the um, uh, assigned requirement at the plaza. And I, I think, I think we knew that it would, that it was okay. But how will it affect additional um, uh, storefronts that may come before this board? Um, will there still be sufficient square footage allotted for them, or is the formula somehow taking into that into account? Um, bear with me for one moment. I'm just going to pull it up real quick. I, I believe they calculated it based on their frontage only. And that makes sense. I'm just wondering if it is congruent with the way that the code does it. And to answer the previous question, the, the hours are one hour prior and two hours after close. Yep. Thank you. I'm just, hold on. I apologize if you just bear with me. I'm just pulling up the table as we speak. So there's a, a the there's, it's handled by by um, maximum square foot area and then wall area percentage, um, and so the when we look at they calc you guys calculated your um, compliance with respect to the wall area of your respective space, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, and so each wall would count. So there, I believe the building, what's the square footage? Six, is it not quite 60, it's 58, it's some, I'm not even looking. something, I think, yeah. Right, 58, <coughs> right, right. So that means the other two tenants would have, for each wall, for the building, um, 50, there would be ample room for others to have similar sized signage on their, loca on their location as well. Um, and the 20% each space is going to have that configuration. So if we use 20% of the entire wall versus 20% of the area allotted for their storefront, um, I'd have to check with, I don't know if there's guidance in the code directly about how we would interpret that. It doesn't appear that we'll be creating a variance requirement for a subsequent tenant. Okay, so what's the total allowable square footage for signage uh, that is to be shared amongst all of the tenants at that property, according to our code? Uh, it's a area maximum square footage is 350 square feet. And then you guys were applying for? 116. So almost identical. So if you think about it, if you take 350 divided by... Um, Three, it's going to get you to one fifteen. And there's ish. three. Ten, there's uh, Verizon. There is Lowe's, the Mo's. And then there's a third there's yet a to be named. There's a third yet to be named. Correct. That's all of them. Yeah. Well, and also, uh, does this also include the freestanding? Nope. No. Only the building mounted. This signage. is building mounted only, and windows are calculated separately from the building itself. Okay. So they're those are treated separately. And this uh, Verizon store, at least from the rendering, it looks like it has a little bit of a bigger footprint than the rest of them. That is correct. So if they're a little bit higher, then that's okay. All right. That seems to make sense. Thank you. I do have a couple quick staff questions then on this. The sign on the door, that's something can be done ministerially, right? Um, yes. Okay. We don't need to deal with that today. And the pylon sign, because... The pylon itself, or marquee, or whatever that turns out to be, is now an adjourned case. We're not going to be ruling on that, but that can come back to us. So here's the thing: the what, for the for that purpose, so Vital Signs made the application, including that the pa their particular panel for their client, as part of the subsequent decision you might make with respect to the freestanding sign at 12:33. You would approve it as per. Sorry, I'm like not as a separate application. You would you would Prove it as a separate application that would grant vital signs the ability to install that um, that panel sign without having to come back to this board. Got it. 
Does that make sense? Yep. So even though that Vital Signs included it as part of their application, um, because on behalf of their client, that portion of the of the project or the signage package isn't getting addressed okay, tonight. Right. They don't have to come back as a separate applicant as part of the subsequent approval of that freestanding sign, in whatever form it might take. Then um, Vital Signs could act based on that approval if they. So wanted something different or they wanted to pro propose their own freestanding sign or whatever the case may be, something other than that, that st structure, they would have to come back to the board. But if, if this board's amenable to that, otherwise it's a panel inside of a sign that you're going to be improving. And we can just ensure that whatever form that panel takes is presented as vital signs would install it. And our deputy town attorney would be yelling at me if I was saying something wrong, I presume. He would right. yell. Okay. I, I not would, yell. Would he not wouldn't yell. yell. He'd just correct. <laughs> okay. Anything else from the board? All right. If you'd have a seat for just a moment. This is a public hearing, so we'll open the public hearing on this. If anyone wishes to speak regarding this application, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Okay, with that, this also is a type two action for seeker, correct? Yep. No further action there. Um, I wrote down some conditions. You want me to take a stab at the? Yeah, if you'd like to, sure. <clears throat> All right. So on PB application 2021-10-1, I would make the motion that we approve the application with the following two conditions. One, that the lighting turns on no more than one hour prior and turns off no more than two hours post business hours. And that this approval is for signs number one and two only. I'll second. Mr. Huber. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No abstains and three absents. Motion carries. Thank you. item on the agenda is also a tabled adjourned item, uh, case number PB 2021-08-4. All right, so with that, I think we need to remove it from the table. I would make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, any opposed? No abstains. Okay. Case again, number 2021-08-4, upon the matter of request by Sonburn Sales, Inc., for preliminary and final site plan approval to construct a 4,232 plus or minus square foot burn dairy retail store in Delhi and fueling facility with freestanding fuel canopy and fuel pumps on premises 2180 Eastridge Road in a C business district. All set? Yes, sir. Please go uh, ahead. Good evening. My name is Christian Bernal, uh, Senior Executive Vice President with Sunburn Sales, Inc., which is the applicant for this. Uh, so I'm going to start off. Last meeting, planning board meeting, was on September Chris, 20th. Chris, can I stop you just for one yes. second so Michelle can get your address? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Sorry. Uh, one, 171, Route 5, Weedsport, New York. I apologize. Thanks. 13166. Okay, I was in front of this board uh, formerly on September 27th. What I'm going to do is walk the board and the residents and, and public here through the changes that have been made uh, since the meeting on September 27th. Uh, the first one is, I'm going to walk right over here, and I can point to this at, as needed, uh, is the dumpster enclosure right here, Roman numeral 3. You'll see the dumpster enclosure, which is located here in the northeast corner. We moved that dumpster enclosure 
uh, to the south by approximately 10 feet further away from the residential property line. We also, at the board's request, added arborvitae trees uh, similar to the arborvitaes that were behind the uh, HVAC mechanical pad. So you can see there's kind of a, we enclosed the dumpster enclosure for any noise and whatnot. Uh, that's one of the changes. Uh, per the board's request, we moved the air machine uh, and the sidewalk. The air machine was located over here in the corner. The air machine is now moved closer to Ridge Road and there is a two foot grass strip. We moved the sidewalk, pedestrian sidewalk, to the east towards Wegmans. Uh, a new lighting plan was submitted to this board. Uh, it is on the back here, but the lighting plan, as you've, if you've looked at it now, and it was submitted to staff, has zero foot candles on all property lines, as I had stated before. Uh, Ridgewood Drive curb cuts over here. The last plan had a 33 foot radius. This plan has a 20, 20 foot radius. So what that did is it basically reduced the size of that curb cut by 26 feet, okay, where it hits the road. And you can see the radius is there. It was talking about lining up. It lines up identically to the Walgreens to the west. And again, uh, 13 feet was shaved off each side of it. The throat is still 30 foot throat. Uh, the Walgreens throat, we went out and measured it, is 31 feet. Uh, the throat at Baucart, the 7-Eleven down there is 31 feet. They both have 20 foot radius as well. So this driveway, this driveway right here is identical to the Walgreens. Uh, one foot smaller at the throat, but identical radiuses. Another uh, change was sign A. You can see it right here. Uh, and sign A, there's a detail right here. What that says is trucks, no right turn. They'll be mounted on a five foot. Again, anyone exiting west onto Ridge, Ridgewood here, We'll be looking at that sign, and again, that sign says in the plans, in the detail, underneath sign A, uh, trucks, no right turn. A monument sign, I'll walk over here. Uh, the monument sign, per the board's request, it was a 10 foot high monument sign. You will see your information packet handed out tonight, redated for with a date of 10-19-2021. Uh, I have reduced that from a 10 foot to an eight foot. Okay, and that's what this looks like here, sign number one. Again, that is in your informational package and submitted to staff. Also, I updated the site plan. Up top here in the signage chart, it was 10 foot high. It is now eight feet high. You will notice on this site plan, in the southwest corner, there was a storm management area uh, there. That's when my engineer, when he did all his calculations and started doing the SWIP and the grading, that is not needed. Uh, this was a pre-developed site, so therefore it's all, all based on calculations and engineering. Uh, whenever you can reduce stormwater management areas, that's what you do. Very, most of the time you need more. But in this case, all his calculations uh, says that this one stormwater management area is more than sufficient when you ran the calculations. So what we did is we removed this here and kept it green space, of course. Okay, uh, that's why the landscaping plan has been updated and given to the board tonight to show exactly what we did here. Okay, you will see that area is now removed as well. Uh, rodent letter I have here containing kill traps. I did give that to the board uh, and it has the language in there I think that one of the board members wanted and that was for secondary poisoning uh, in case a rodent carried a poison or a bait to a neighboring property and their dogs or something. But uh, that has been submitted onto the record as well and it was the first page of your packet there as well. Okay. Uh, uh, GTS Consulting, traffic engineer, uh, there was a letter submitted uh, dated October 18th to this board and put on record. Just wanna make sure that isn't a record, which I'm sure it is. Uh, that discussed, I won't get into it, but that dis discussed queuing and design, okay. Uh, revised landscape plan, we got that. Uh, there was a comment made by the town engineer in regards to uh, the fire marshal wanted to review this. Uh, I did speak to the fire marshal myself personally. He did send an email, I was, believe it was uh, forwarded to the members, uh, and that was on October 21st. Uh, after reviewing the proposal for compliance with fire code requirements for fire apparatus access, I find that there is no issue with complying with requirements of section 503 as designed. Going a step further, the plans were also looked over by the Ridge Culver Fire Department. They have no issue with design. 
So I think we've clarified that. Uh, and that is the changes that I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Richards, any comments, questions? Yeah, Chris, um, when you say the southwest corner, you don't need the, the stormwater management. That is there. correct. Can you just like give me a clue what's going to be there? Is it just going to be just warm? grass? What you see is what's there. It's just grass. We are going to keep that remaining tree over here. Uh, there's a remaining tree over here, and we're proposing those two red maples and street trees. Okay. And then can you talk to me a little bit about the letter dated um, the 18th from uh, CTS Consulting and the number of expected um, vehicles heading north? Uh, on Ridgewood. What I would do after I get done with some other questions, I did bring my traffic engineer tonight, uh, Mr. Gordon Stansbury from GTS. He is here in the audience. I could have him step to the podium and answer that question uh, for you, if that's okay. That works for me. It's, we want to get the questions that I can answer, but I'd rather have him answer that question. Great. Um, I think I know that we've gone through a lot of this. Again, I appreciate all the uh, input that you've taken from the um, neighbors and from the town. So I'm good at the moment. I'm sure I'll chime in because I always do. Okay. Um, I would just like to point out uh, for the record that we also have a letter from uh, DP, DPW, right? Is that the, no, I'm sorry. You give a memo from Bob's the Commissioner of Public yeah. Works. Public Works, okay, yeah, so, um, which which states that uh, the, the town will also post a, uh, a weight limit sign uh, on Ridgewood um, as well, so we'll have the private sign and that other proposed sign or, or sign from the, the town. I just want to make sure that was brought up. Uh, Mrs. Hollenbeck, anything uh, to add at the moment? Mr. Huber? Um, I just want to follow up on Mr. Richard's question about the removal of the um, stormwater management area. And I know that there was some landscaping that was included in there. So I think it would be nice to see that at least in part carried over onto the new um, design. And I um, was wondering if that was a consideration. And then two, I just, I, I want to go on record that I still have significant concerns. Um, particularly about the pedestrian access uh, that the pedestrian access that's included in the most recent site plan is not the most convenient that it possibly could and puts pedestrians in um, a lengthy um, point of conflict with um, vehicles. And there were other layouts that were a little bit more pedestrian friendly that um, I think would have been a better, better fit for the uh, site. In addition, the site layout is not in congruence with the recommendation in the town comprehensive master plan. Further, the curb cut um, onto Ridgewood Road, onto Ridgewood Drive, is going to add additional uh, delivery vehicles and tanker trucks, which are over and above what is typically present on that street. Uh, the hours of operation create a lengthy duration of additional noise and ambient lighting. And some of this noise is noise that the applicant doesn't necessarily have control over, like loud mufflers, uh, car stereos, so off, so it's difficult to mitigate. And it's over and above what is um, common for other businesses in that area with, in regards of hours of operation. And the grading for the site places the site higher than the um, residential properties to the west on Ridgewood Drive, which further elevates anything objectionable that would be coming from the site. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that I continue to have those concerns. Thank you very much. So I would, uh, just to tag on to one thing that you said, Mr. Huber, <clears throat> I, I would... Uh, I would slightly echo the, the thought process of the stormwater management area to the southwest corner. Um, I do think it would be nice to have a little additional landscaping, whether it be another maple or, or, or what have you, to kind of repopulate that space more a little than, bit. More than happy to add. So um, I, I think that would be a, a very strong add because of the location and everything. 
Uh, anything else from the board before I open it up for some public comment? You have one thing I forgot. Okay, you'll have time if you want to bring it up. All right, with that, I'll ask you to have a seat. Thank you. Do you want, do you want my traffic engineer to come up and answer your question? Oh, yeah. Or you want him why, don't we, why don't we do that first, yeah. please? Yep. Yes. Yep, please. And again, this is Gordon Stansbury, uh, professional traffic engineer from GTS Consultants. So, Gordon, I know that we went over some of this at workshop. Yes. But I would um, like for you, you to talk to first, me. So I can get that out of the way. Yep. Uh, Gordon Stansbury, GTS Consulting, 1396 Whitebridge Road, Chittenango, New York, 13037. Uh, so, yes, your, uh, your question regarding um, the use of Ridgewood Drive, um, the storage capacity uh, queuing, um, was the subject of my October 18th letter. Uh, we reviewed the, uh, the overall stacking space is approximately 100 feet uh, from uh, uh, Ridge Road to the driveway, which is uh, standard queuing capacity for approximately four vehicles, <coughs> assuming 25 feet per car uh, with stacking. Um, based on our uh, traffic study, when we completed it, uh, the standard queues that we observed on that approach to Ridge Road uh, is one or two vehicles uh, typically. Uh, it's a, it's a low-volume roadway, carries about uh, 15 to 30 cars during the peak hours, which is approximately one car every two minutes or less. Um, the, uh, the way the site is laid out, the main driveway on Ridge Road is, is centered on the site. Um, therefore, we're not expecting a significant uh, customer usage of the Ridgewood Drive uh, driveway. Um, we're expecting approximately 90 to 93 percent of the overall traffic to use the main driveway centered on the site for ingress and egress. Uh, we're estimating approximately 5% of the traffic generated would be from the neighborhood itself to the north. Uh, those would be customers that come down to the store to get a, a gallon of milk or get gas on their way out of the, out of the neighborhood. And then approximately 7% of customer traffic would uh, enter and exit from Ridge Road using that driveway. Um, once that uh, calculation is applied to the overall trip generation, uh, we're expecting the use of that roadway to be uh, approximately 10 cars or less uh, during the peak hours with, again, 90 to 93 percent of the traffic using the primary driveway. Um, with the projected volumes, we're expecting a, an additional queue of, of one car or two cars at most at any given time, which, given the existing queues, uh, will fit within that 100-foot distance without stacking back and blocking the driveway. Um, the question for the, the need for that driveway. Um, from two, uh, two points of view, uh, first off, the, the truck access for the tanker truck. Um, we're expecting approximately two to three trucks per week for fuel deliveries. Uh, those trucks will need to exit that driveway to be able to navigate the site. Um, the existing storage distance between the driveway and Ridge Road is sufficient for that tractor trailer to fully uh, enter the southbound lane without uh, angling across and blocking northbound traffic as it uh, travels into the neighborhood. Um, the, uh, the second piece that I really want to touch on is the overall, um, access management. It, uh, it's standard access management practices are to provide cross access where feasible. Uh, given that we have a street here, um, the, the cross access to have access to both streets is good practice because, uh, a customer say coming from Walgreens to the gas station or coming from the neighborhood to the gas station, they don't need to go out onto Ridge Road to then get into the site or, again, to return to the neighborhood. Uh, they don't have to go out onto the main road. So from an access management standpoint, that's it's what we want to do um, as traffic engineers. Um, we have had the study reviewed by both uh, the county and uh, the town's engineer, Labella. Uh, both are in agreement with the findings of the traffic study. Uh, they're in agreement with the... Uh, the uh, lack of impact expected on Ridge Road Drive, and um, that about covers it. Yeah, can you talk to me about the northbound traffic, though, on Ridgewood, and then if you're familiar with it, what is the um, traffic situation on Worthington? I know you weren't here for all of the public hearings, but quite a few folks have talked to us about traffic entering the neighborhood via vis-a-vis -vis Ridgewood, and a northbound behavior to go to Worthington um, to head north again on Culver. 
So we, uh, we did not study uh, cut through traffic as, as in terms of the neighborhood when the traffic study was completed. Uh, we do have traffic counts uh, from, uh, from the study. Um, existing volumes traveling northbound on uh, Ridgewood, Ave or Ridgewood uh, Drive. Um, is it Drive or Avenue? Drive. 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 Um, in the morning, it was uh, six vehicles total that we saw travel northbound. Uh, with 17 vehicles traveling southbound exiting. Uh, during the evening peak, there was uh, 55 vehicles total, so approximately one vehicle per minute um, traveling northbound um, past the site into the neighborhood. So it's, it's, it, by all measures of traffic, that would not be considered a, a significant volume with one, less than one per minute. I appreciate that. Good. On that front, for now? Any follow up? No? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so with that, the public hearing is already open. It's been carried over from another previous meeting, but we will reopen the public hearing. So please come up to the podium. Um, we are limited to five minutes. Um, and please keep in mind that this board has no governance over the hours of operation of this facility. Um, so any conversation regarding that, uh, unfortunately, is, is not applicable to us. So keep it to, uh, to site plan related items as much as possible. With that, please go right ahead. My name is Anna Zangi. I live at 60 Ebbington Road. Okay, um, I sent the board a let, uh, an email, and I hope that you had a chance to look at it along with the pictures. And there were three points that I was um, still concerned about since the last meeting. The first one being the grade of the property versus the neighboring. I sent you um, a picture of m me standing out there so that you could see it in relation to the person. And it's, it's very high. And if you look over on, on the Walgreens side, you'll see that they did address the issue by putting a retaining wall and then a fence above it. My question is, is what is Burn Dairy going to be doing um, about that great change, especially since there'll be construction taking place on that site, you would think it would shift maybe the earth or something and make it even uh, less stable than it currently is because it's just a slope. Um, that was one question. And the other one, I appreciate that they moved the dumpster 10 feet, but I feel as though it should be closer to Ridge Road. If it was um, petitioned or landscaped, it wouldn't be such an eyesore. But it, would, it is a big thing for us to make sure that the smell and the rodent situation stays as farthest away from our properties as possible. I spoke to um, Elrich, I, I can't even, I, I don't know how to pronounce their name, um, the rodent control company, that he said that in the last meeting that they use, and Wegmans uses them too. I spoke to Doug, he's the, the manager for this area, he lives in Greece, and he said that there is no trap and retrain for out, outdoor use. Um, so I don't know what service he's going to be using to, to carry that out. Um, they said they use it inside, but only under special circumstances. It's not something they do, typically do on the inside, but they don't do it at all at the outside. His name was Doug. I, didn't, I have his phone number, but I don't have his last name. Um, so um, Wegmans has the rodent control service come out every other week. And if the rodent uh, situation is high, they come out more often. I'd like to know what their plan is for rodent control. Because as we've seen in the paper, that rodents are a big deal in Rochester and also in Irondequoit. Um, and I know Wegmans goes above and beyond, but we kind of expect that of all our neighbors, since we're in such close proximity to each other, I think it's important that that be addressed. Um, the, Third topic was the heating and air conditioning system in the back of the building. Um, I think he said at the last meeting that they were going to um, get a sound study or something, or some kind of technical find out how loud it is. Um, I, I spoke to Mabel Campbell, who lives at 25 Abington Road. She's right behind the heating and air conditioning system. And she goes to the church on um, King's Highway, and she said at the time that they built the building, they were asked to move the heating and the air conditioning to the front of the building so as not to disturb the neighbors behind. And we would like the same consideration. And just to double check, I drove over to the Kingdom Hall, and yes, the heating and air conditioning is in the front of the building behind some arborvitaes. 
Um, so I, I still have that as an open issue. A third one I didn't mention here is security. What are they planning on doing for security? I stopped over at Wegmans and they have a, a guard stationed at the front and I spoke to him, he's a retired police officer. And he felt it was very important for all the establishments in the neighborhood to have additional security. Wegmans has 150 cameras on their property, which, which surprised me, but I guess it really doesn't. Um, so those are my three issues. And if it's possible, um, Mabel Campbell, who, works at 20, who lives at 25 Abington Road, asked me to speak on her behalf because she's elderly and she can't attend. Is it okay if I do that? Certainly. Um, her concern is um, she would like to see them move the fence closer to the property line and the landscaping being closer to, to Burn Dairy because currently there's the, the wooden fence and then her um, chain link fence and all those houses have a chain link fence. So there's a, like a gully sort of and the trash comes over the top, falls into that gully and then she has to have somebody, pay somebody to come clean it up and it's very unsightly. So that's why she would like to have the fence closer to the property line. And also behind her house is this dead tree. It looks like it's been staying there forever because there's no bark or anything and she was concerned that they would be taking, that they commit to taking that tree down. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hello. My name is Christine McGuire. I live at 15 Ridgewood Drive. My home is about five feet away from where the driveway comes across. It's on the opposite side of the street of Ridgewood from where this is going to be located. I live directly next door to the Walgreens. So my house is being extremely and directly impacted by this. Also, there's been a lot of things taken care of for the people whose properties are behind the building, but there's no fence going up to block my view of gas pumps, my view of the side of a burn dairy, all the people that are going to be turning in and then pulling back out with their headlights facing into my home. I also have not heard any response as to, I have heard responses to uh, the property values of homes that are backing the building or have a, a property line issue with other buildings of this nature or other gas stations in this like, but I have not heard anything about property loss, value loss of surrounding area properties that are just in view of sites like this. I just moved here last February. I just purchased my home and now I have a 30 year mortgage for this house that now I have a gas station going directly across the street from. So anything that can <laughs> limit the view, my bedroom window is direct is on the same side of the house as my front door, which all overlooks this beautification process. So all of the shrubberies you wanna put up, great. It's not going to stop any of the light from coming into my home. It's not gonna stop any of the, the view of the gas pumps coming into my home. If there's no property, there's, the property is so elevated on that side that it's, it's a direct impact on my home. If there's no, on the Walgreens, they, they built a retention wall. They built a 10 foot fence on top of that retention wall. So something like that might, might help. But honestly, it's, it's just gonna be a complete eyesore and ruin my property values. These are my issues. I hope that you can understand if you are in my position, if you bought a house where there was once a library and now suddenly it's a gas station, I hope you would feel the same way and have the same passion about what you're speaking about. I hope you take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Irene Doctor. I live at 11 Salem Road, um, and I echo the sentiments of all my neighbors, what they have said and what's coming. Um, so I am actually, um, I mean, at this point, more concerned with aesthetics since we know it'll probably go in. Um, so when you're looking for burned dairies, they seem to be everywhere. Um, so as I've been driving, I've been taking some pictures. Um, so what I've noticed, um, and, and actually it does appear in the site plan, um, is that when they're on the corners, the corners are really open. Um, 
which I can see from, you know, like a sales and marketing side, um, that's really important to the facility because then you can see it really clearly wherever you're coming from. Um, and I, I will leave you my photos and notes so you can take a look. But um, it's just not pretty. And I, I mean, the properties are neat. They're well kept. And, you know, I mean, as far as gas stations go, they are neat looking. Um, but they're not very attractive. So um, I'm thinking that if somehow we could shield that corner, um, that number one, it would keep traffic from trying to go in like and enter through the Ridgewood entrance. Like maybe they wouldn't see that there was an entrance there and try to, you know, if cars are queuing to take a left-hand turn um, into the main entrance, all of a sudden somebody sees the other entrance, they're gonna cut in you know, and try and get in that way. Um, so, to, so to try and avoid that, to kind of shield that entrance and really only, hopefully only use it for the trailers and the trucks and you know, whatever else has to go in and out of there. Um, so I have, I actually went, I saw Greece, Spencerport, North Chile, and one in Farmington, and they all kind of look the same. Um, it's just not very attractive. It's open and the landscaping just gets spindly because that's what landscaping does. Um, so I have a couple pictures of that, but I do have to say that the one in Greece has this really pretty wall. <laughs> um, so my suggestion would be in that spot, like right here, where there's nothing at the moment, is that we have a wall that goes both ways along the walk, um, and that there are tall trees and low shrubs, um, and you know, also a little drawing of what that might look like. Um, and then um, I think in here somewhere I also have a picture of some landscaping that I saw on Monroe Avenue one day where they actually have like birch trees and low shrubs and I think that would actually shield the neighbors to the front. Um, so it would provide a taller shield, a lower shield. Um, and I guess I would be for the berm actually staying higher, having this pretty wall um, and then having the lot lower so that between the shrubs, this wall and some taller trees, you would actually shield it. And then when we turn the corner every time, we wouldn't be looking at um, the gas station. Um, and maybe it would be park-like and it would actually be attractive. Um, and then I am wondering, is this what the sign looks like, like the one at Maiden Lane? Um, is this one? So please, please, I'm sorry. please, direct, please direct it to the oh, board. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yep, thank you. Um, so I'm just wondering, if this is the sign, there are some uglier signs. Um, so this was a sign that I thought was a little prettier than some of the other ones. Um, whatever that's worth. Can get that to me. Yeah, that'd be perfect if when you're done we can pass it okay, along. Yeah, and you know what, my notes are all on there. Um, and then in regards to the landscaping, I mean, looking at that is like speaking a foreign language. You know, I, I don't know what it's actually saying. Um, the problem with landscaping trees is that they're usually this small. And if you, you know, if you drive up and down Ridge Road, most of the trees are exactly the same size. They never actually grow. They grow like two feet and then they, they're half dead and they just live there like that for 20 years. Um, you know, so these are current trees. You know, there's one that's nicely crooked. Um, that doesn't help us, you know. <laughs> I don't want to look at that either. Um, so here's the picture of, I think it's, you know, it might even be uh, Brighton High School. But you got some low bushes, you got some pretty birch trees, give me some multiple tree trunks. Um, you know, something that's actually gonna be attractive um, because you throw a tree here and there and a couple U's and you know what, that's what you get for, for the life of the property. Um, and then there was also a difference in fencing in some of the areas. So I didn't know if we were talking about a white fence like this. Um, there are also different dumpsters. So one dumpster area was much more attractive than another dumpster area. Um, and there was also, um, none of the dumpsters had doors on the front. Um, so I think like even like McDonald's has like a door on the front of the dumpster. I'm just thinking that having the entire thing enclosed would help, um, I mean, you can see the garbage that's on the ground. Um, and again, I mean, the properties are very neat, but nonetheless, there's garbage. Um, that if there was actually an enclosure on the front and a door that closed, it would help the garbage blowing around and maybe smell. Um, I'm going to ask you to wrap it up. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Pictures of what all the heating units look like, there's a lot. Um, so it would be nice if these were screened. Um, I also have a rodent concern, um, and my concern actually backs up to construction. 
that I'm wondering if there's anything that they can do in advance of tearing down the building and like disturbing the site to kind of get rid of what's there right now because it you know hasn't been occupied um, because they are going to come into our neighborhood. We've had that before, like many, many years ago with construction in the plaza. It took years to get rid of them. Um, and if every neighbor cannot afford a pest elimination company, then it doesn't matter. You know, so one neighbor is going to spend 500 bucks, the other one can't afford it, and the mice and the rats are going to, you know, they're going to travel through the neighborhood. Um, so I will leave these for you. Um, thank Please. you for listening. Give them to me. I'll okay, I'll them. put them back in order. <laughs> I'll get them to you. Thank you so much. We're not really supposed to respond, but if Mr. Chair will let me, I do want to uh, point, I, you made some good uh, points here, and I, I want to point out that one, the, the suggestion that you had about the stone wall at the corner is one of the things that we incorporated into the into the site plan, and um, the trees that you have pointed out. The uh, board makes a general um, look to uh, incorporate shade trees, so hopefully they'll get larger. But I did, you hit on a couple things that we did, and I want to make sure that you got, you, you knew that those were things that we did look at. Uh, Patty Burke, 122 Worthington Road. So I'm the person that all night long will have the spotlight shining in her living room and in her bedroom. Let's talk about curb cut, which big big agenda and item. I'm failing to understand if the traffic's not an issue, the additional traffic, then why do we need the curb cut? Why can't they go off East, Ro East Ridge Road? How do you have that both ways? It's okay when they need it, but it's not okay when they don't need it. I, I don't understand that. Oil tankers are like, I, I looked this up today, 38 to 42 feet. So you tell me coming out of that curb cut, taking a left, if it doesn't take a right, how that's not going to bottleneck that entrance and exit. And how when that's in that road, anybody behind there is going to even be able to get by it. I mean, I'm assuming you guys have been down there. That road's not wide. There's no line markers, there's no lights, there's no crosswalks, there's no anything. Kids walk home every day from there, from school. So, you know, again, I'm at the stop sign. I see this all day long. People whipping down that road, blow off the stop sign, and go through. So what happens when it starts getting bad out and the cars start slipping and somebody gets hit? There's, you know, I got two little boys that get the bus in front of my house. What happens when somebody comes blowing off that stop sign. And, you know, you can talk all you want to. People, not everybody obeys the rules. So when that gets bottlenecked, people are going to get mad. They're going to take a right on Ridgewood, and they're going to take a left on Worthington, and that's where you're going to have problems. And it, it, it's such a short little distance, anything more than three cars is going to be an issue. So if you're going to get 80-something people there an hour, how's that going to work? That entrance and exit, if it's not an issue according to all the traffic studies, needs to be on East Ridge Road. And I apologize, I'm angry. I just feel like this is where we live. This is where I go home after a hard day to enjoy my property and my home. And I have to, our whole neighborhood has to give this up so this guy can make money who doesn't even live here. Those, and if people need to go to their business, then they can wait an extra 20 seconds or 10 seconds and go in and out on East Ridge Road. And that, that's all I have. I'm just, like I said, I apologize for being angry, but, you know, I, I think about this, and I think, I'm going to have to sell my house because of the property values. And don't, there's no way anybody who lives across the street from the gas station's property values are going to increase. That's just crazy in common sense. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandy Orm, and I live at 20 Salem Road, and um, I'd just like to echo what everybody else is saying, that um, I feel like we come to these meetings, we tell you what's going on, we hear these traffic guys, he didn't even do a study on cut -throughs. Um we live here and you listen to us 
and we don't necessarily feel like we're being heard because money talks, but this is our lives, and you work for us, and um, I feel like we really want you to hear us. We're just talking about one exit because Christian Brunel talked about an exit onto Bucart. Well, Bucart is a double yellow. We don't even have a line on Ridgewood. I mean, that's crazy to compare Bucart to Ridgewood. Ridgewood is a quaint street. And um, it just makes me, you know, sick to my stomach. And I spoke with Carrie Ivers, and she told me that the same there'd be the same amount of people going down Ridgewood if they have a curb cut or if they don't have a curb cut. And I think that's the biggest crack of crap that I have ever heard because um, I, I just think that you're asking for a problem if you have a curb cut because if it meets up with Walgreens, people are going to shoot right through that curb cut. And there's that little cut through behind Walgreens. You can just go right straight through behind Walgreens and cut through. It's going to be a nightmare. I mean, if people don't do that, they're going to go right. It's just, it's not safe. And um, I, you know, they talk about taxes. Like Carrie told me, oh, this is going to do tax money and stuff like that. Well, our, our houses will depreciate in value. So Arondequite's going to lose taxes that way. So do you want to lose tax money, you know, you know, you got to pick. So if we're just asking you about this curb cut to help our neighborhood, I know it will help our neighborhood. I know it. And um, I, what I did is I went out at night on Friday night at 10 o'clock, and I took some photos in the neighborhood. And Patty actually went out and um, took in her car, took a, a photo at the light at Culver. She was on Worthington. And it's interesting because when you're at that light, you can't even see the no turn on red. It just looks like a box. The sign just looks, you can't see what the sign says. So if you're going to have people coming down and through, and a cop pulls them over and say, well, I can't even see what that sign says. But also, like she says, you go down, Worth you go down Ridgewood, and you'll fly right in her, light, right through her living room because there's no barriers. And um, I was going to hand out photos, but you have to excuse me. But um, I'm going to turn this one. Shouldn't just be a little button that kind of pops up. Okay, this photo is what Patty took, so it's right here. It's, that is the no right on red. You cannot see that, you see? Uh -huh. Do you see? That's no right on red. And um, let's see. Right, right here on Ridgewood and Abington, the corner, that's our only stoplight. I mean, that's our only street light. So that is a picture right there of that. And I started here on um, at the beginning of Ridgewood, off of East Ridge Road. The property of 2180 does have a light. It's right there, and I took a picture of that. And then... Um, I just walked a little bit further so you can see how it gets darker. Um, but uh, this is Salem in Ridgewood, right there. So this and this, these two photos, those are the corner of Worthington and Ridgewood. So you can see where they intersect <laughs> is completely dark. So they're going to go flying right in her. And this is, I walk down Salem. This is what it's like at 10 o'clock. I mean, it's just a very quiet neighborhood. 
and we have no metal line. So it's just really quiet, and I just hope you guys realize that. And I don't know, also, I wanted to touch on one thing. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to kind of wrap it up here. We've hit our five minutes, so. Okay, well, I just wanted to talk about the barrier behind the property. I was concerned about what happens if there's a crazy car chase and a car goes through the um, fence behind Burn Dairy. Will they be flying in their the people and people on Abington's backyard because here I'll pass them around I took photos of Walgreens and you can also see the retaining wall that they were talking about in that woman's yard but the Walgreens has a metal barrier like on the highway so I don't know does your fence have a okay so I don't know if there's does, but that's something to think about. Thank you. Okay, ma'am, I'm, I'm going to give you five seconds to just kind of sum up, please, because okay, so we do have I, other people that are waiting. So I just want to let you know that um, there's a lot of money involved and convenience and stuff like that, but I, I just hope that you listen to us about our neighborhood, you know, and consider us Can as a... Just to ask one question to the applicant. Are you asking the town for street lights? <laughs> no. No. Okay. I was, I was showing you. As no, I was just showing you how dark. quaint and quiet it is. Okay. I, yeah. I'm clear. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Adam Field from 54 Abington Road. So I think what's ticking us off the most here with this curb cut is Burning Dairy bought this property knowing full well what existed there. They knew the entrance and from the beginning they basically played it off that we know we bought the wrong location, that entrance doesn't work, we need to we need a curb cut. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the last meeting there were about four of you that said Burn and Dairy needs to show 100% that they need this curb cut. And now they're saying well we need it because 7% of traffic is going to use it. So really we just like it because it'd be easier for our trucks to go in and out. And every single um, thing that they've shown us they haven't changed the front entrance a single time they haven't put any effort in to try to re, um, redo that front entrance to make it work for trucks and especially now that they're getting rid of the pond in the front there they have more room why can't you guys make them actually do something to that front road or the front entrance to say make it accessible to the trucks if that's the only reason you need the curb cut so again seven percent of traffic none of us believe that especially since you haven't done the the cut through traffic we all know it's going to be a ton more but if they're saying it's for the trucks, have them make that front entrance that they bought the, the whole construction place with, knowing that was their only entrance, have them make that work for the entrance and get rid of the curb cut. Makes no sense, even based on their own numbers of 7% traffic. There's no need for it. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Cantor. I live at 111 Salem Road, so I'm the second house to the end of the street near Attleboro, near the school. Uh, me and my husband chose this neighborhood because it was quiet and safe for um, kids in the street playing, even though you have to watch out. Um, we raised our kids here, um, and I'm all for having something on the corner, but a gas station, we don't need another gas station. And I don't care what kind of shrubs you put out there. If they're too close to the road, they're gonna die. And like she said, for when it comes to beautification of East Ridge Road, it's, it's slowly being revitalized. Um, there will be more cars driving through our neighborhood. And Worthington does not even have full sidewalks on the street. For many of us who walk, our dogs, our children, school kids, and we will be walking in the street along with these vehicles. It only has a partial sidewalk. Fuel trucks will have difficulty turning left into this burn dairy from East Ridge Road, um, especially when he said the last time they're going to be delivering fuel between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Well, those are the peak times of the day especially when you're getting school time coming out. I mean, I can come 
and sit at that light and wait to turn left. I could sit there for a minute sometimes waiting for the, st all the people are going right on red from, from Culver. So I got to watch them. I got to watch the people coming from this way, from Wegmans and the, the plaza and all that stuff. And if you start down at the end of East Ridge Road, where Newport Road is, we've already got a million different right turn driveways coming out of there. And people just don't step. They just go right through them all, including the ones, the people coming in and out of the school. They think just because their, their sporting event is let out, they can just all come out and block traffic. And electric is supposed to be the way of the future, and I haven't heard one thing about putting any charger in this location. And let's see. And if you are a person with a camper, like us, we will not be able to even go in or out of this gas station. We're already limited as it is. And as a person owning a personal truck, we will have entering problems. <clears throat> entering and exiting if somebody is sitting there because we have to go way out and around people to get out of there. And there will be more people cutting through. That's just a fact. And I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robert Sandy, 46 Abington Road. I'm just going to read uh, my input tonight, but prior to doing that, uh, I found it curious to, to have traffic information presented that talks about the current status of the low level of traffic on Ridgewood. And that is the whole point. We want to maintain the low level of traffic on Ridgewood. We don't want to increase the level. But anyway, uh, there's been many concerns voiced about traffic issues trying to get in and out of Ridgewood, Ridge Road from Ridgewood. These are accurate, but what I don't want to be, don't want to be lost in, in that is that Worthington to Ridgewood path will soon be the backdoor path to Burn Dairy if there's a curb cut into Ridgewood. This would be an additional traffic into our neighborhood. In previous meetings, there's been many complaints that we don't need a gas station in this area. At our last meeting, the town clerk or secretary responded to these complaints with, the board has no authority to deny a gas station in this location because uh, there are like businesses in the area. This is where the town leaders let the residents of this neighborhood and all the town residents down by allowing this property to go on auction in the first place and giving them the ability to control what is done uh, with this property, unlike the direction taken with the property on this campus. However, tonight, you have the chance to right the wrong, th that wrong. I'm asking this board not to approve a curb cut onto Ridgewood, or at the very least, make it a directional curb cut uh, to eliminate or greatly reduce the traffic impact on what has been to this point, a quiet, very quiet neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else? <coughs> Evening. Yep. My name is Phil Dodds. I live at 195 Avondale Road. <coughs> um, thank you for having this. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to all of us. My mom and I moved here about a decade ago. And we love it here. And one of the reasons we did move here was quality of life. It's a great area. It's very, very nice. <clears throat> you had a, we had a library. It was wholesome. It was positive. It was nothing but good for the community. And that's one of the things that we love about that little place, that little, that little neighborhood. <clears throat> now we're putting in something that, by any definition, is 12 different kinds of a nuisance. It doesn't add anything positive to people's quality of life. <clears throat> there is already a traffic issue on Ridgewood, which is <clears throat> the issue here. Any additional traffic increases the already issues that are on that street. <clears throat> and like the gentleman in the back there said, <clears throat> they knew what they were buying. They knew there was only one entrance. 
And every step of the way, they're going, no, no, we, we don't care. Just brush it aside. I hope that my leaders for this community continue to think about quality of life for its residents when, like this gentleman said, before they put it up for auction, that anybody can do anything that they want. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excuse me, Phil, that was 195 Abington? Avondale. 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 Thank you. Mary Jo Sandy, 46 Abington Road. Um, all I want to say is there should be no way that they're allowed to use Ridgewood, especially trucks. They're just going to block everything. It is a quiet neighborhood. It has kids. The East Ridge children are walking that way. When Wegmans was put there, they didn't have any access to our street. They figured out how to do things on Ridge Road. If they bought something on Ridge Road, they better figure out how to do it. There's no way they should be interrupting our neighborhood. It isn't good, and he knows it, and everybody knows it. And as we said, if it wasn't auctioned, we would have had control of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Okay, thank you all for your input with that. I'm gonna close the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come up and respond to any of the questions? Comments? I'm just gonna work my way down the list. I took some quick notes and if if I forgot something, feel free to. The board can ask me if I forgot anything. Uh, uh, grade, uh, the grade between Ridgewood Drive and the berm is approximately two to three feet. Okay, the greeting plan was done and it was two to three feet. You also, so that grade is, that grade is right from approximately the road to the edge of the three foot berm is two to three feet. So you add a three foot berm on top of that three feet, now you're at six feet, and with the three foot use that I proposed on here, you're talking uh, between an eight and nine foot grade elevation, okay, for any sort of lighting. Uh, in regards to the rodents, uh, you can see the letter that I changed, and I did talk to Ehrlich. As you can see, it is on Ehrlich letterhead and signed. Uh, we will use trap and kill devices. Uh, she had spoke to them before. I have called them since, and that letter, as you'll see the date on it, it's current and valid. That rodent w situation has been addressed and cleared up. Uh, in regards to the HVA study that was submitted to the board uh, last meeting that was done on my new store on Maiden Lane and Fester in the town of Greece, I shared that study uh, with this board, uh, and I th think we've addressed that. Uh, Security-wise, uh, we'll have approximately 30 security cameras on site uh, for security. Uh, in regards to Mrs. Campbell's and the dead tree, we will be more than happy to take her dead tree down. I have done that on numerous projects, uh, but all she has to do is I will request something in writing, of course, to hold us harmless, and I'll make her sign that, And but uh, we'll be more than happy. Matter of fact, we will be in contact with all the neighbors at a pre-construction meeting, and they'll have whatever they want me to do. I'll be more than happy uh, to address their issues in regards to that, that uh, hedgerow. As I stated before, we want to leave that hedgerow but we want to only leave living trees. If they want something cleaned up, and before I would take that tree down, I would run that by the town and make sure and have someone from the town staff actually look at the tree and say, we will remove this tree. That way I don't get accused of you know killing a live tree. Uh, Ridgewood Drive, buffering. Uh, we talked about no buffering. Again, I, I reiterate that my original plan had no buffering Ridgewood. After listening to the neighbor's concerns and upon the board request, I think I've mitigated this thing um, as, as much as possible. We are proposing again the buffering of three foot use, three foot berm with a two to three foot uh, grade elevation. Uh, the fence stone wall, I think Bradley hit on that. Uh, over here, there is actually a black iron fence, which is not at any other burned dairies uh, along the whole, this corner and along the whole Ridgewood. It takes a corner here. There is an eight foot stone wall centerpiece exactly like the way I made in lane 
on this corner. It's very small on a plan, but it is an eight foot, three foot high stacked stone wall, and that'll look exactly like the monument sign and the one on main lane. So we have incorporated a wall into that corner design. Again, black, that was per the board. I had no fence when I first came in, but it's a black uh, ornamental fence, uh, wrought iron fence. Uh, the dumpster was mentioned, no doors. All of our dumpsters enclosures, as the picture shows, all of them have swing gate doors, uh, slat and whatnot. So that's in the picture as well. You go to any burned area, but they do have doors on them. Others, some some are open, but ours are not. Uh, rodent control was mentioned before the demo. Anytime the town issues a demo permit, one of the main things on every demo pit acro across the state is rodent control. That is up to myself, the owner of the building, to make sure there are no rodents before anything's torn down, and that's part of the demo process. Uh, it's just right on a plan. I'm required to make sure uh, that there are no rodents. I will have Ehrlich do a walkthrough before the demo, and they'll do a walkthrough and address any rodent issues. Uh, but that is part of the demo uh, process. Uh, fuel trucks exiting Ridgeway. Uh, uh, our traffic engineer has, I think, already discussed that. We discussed the queuing and the stacking of 100 feet, which is more than ample for a uh, fuel truck to when it enter, uh, exits and turns south on Ridgewood. So that 100 feet, again, uh, I think somebody said here, it's 43 to 50 feet for a fuel truck. You have 100 feet there. Uh, property values, I won't get into that too much, but there was a letter put on record from CNY Pomeroy Associates Appraisers, uh, professional appraisal company in Central New York, saying that property values would not decrease. Uh, per some research with your town uh, appraiser, you'll see that the property values on Balcar actually went up. So that's that was in the letter <laughs> submitted. Excuse me. Please, this is not an open discussion at this point. That letter was put on record uh, several meetings ago. Uh, In regards to the Ridgewood Drive, uh, we've had three different engineering firms now, uh, two of them professional traffic engineers, uh, one being GTS uh, Consulting who did it, said, and he stood here tonight and said the best design is with the Ridgewood Drive. You also had the Monroe County DOT concur with him and specifically state in their recommendation letter that this was the best design for this site. Okay, and that's per the Monroe County DOT who, you know, up there. Uh, also, you have your own town engineer, Labella Engineering, who has agreed with the former two engineers. So we have three professional engineers that agree on record that this is the best design and it's needed for Ridgewood Drive. And I'll leave it at that. I would also ask, uh, I'll ask that the board to adjourn uh, till next meeting, if at all possible, uh, and we'll take it from there. I'd just like to reiterate the comments that you had made about the um, access from Ridge Road. And that was, in fact, something that we really, we pressed on that to make sure that the access from Ridge was absolutely necessary. And like you said, um, Monroe County DOT and the town's engineer both concur concurred that access needed to be um, left on both points of access. So that was definitely taken into consideration and multiple members of the board looked for unequivocal evidence that the project could not move forward without both of those access points. And there was no but town engineer or Monroe County DOT were not um, supportive of eliminating the access to Ridgewood. Mr. Chair, at the request of the applicant, I would like to make a motion on PV2021084 that this matter get tabled until the next meeting. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No abstains. Three absent. Okay. Thank you. See you next month. We will see you next month. Chicken scratch, but these are pictures. We're going to correct um, the spelling inside of that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give it.
Yeah, she'll make uh, copies. She'll make copies. All right. All right. Excuse me, Chairman. We need a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, 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 the audience, we're not complete. If, we're not done. If yet. you could give that to the yeah, yeah. staff. So we, we have a couple other items to address here, folks. So um, if you could step outside or, or hold any comments for a moment. Uh, Ms. Secretary, I know that we have minutes. Um, at my request, I would like to uh, push those to the next planning board meeting. I did not get a chance to read any of those, so that won't give us too many people to vote. So I'd like to request that we carry those to next month. Sure thing. And with that, I know Mr. Richards loves to give motions to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> okay, thank you.